My name's Peter Gibson. I'm the head of gastroenterology and I'm standing in for Steve Jane who is on well-deserved annual leave at the moment. So I'm doing the thing that we all hate to do and that is to use his slides to give a presentation. But, uh, but it's a great pleasure to give this presentation because, because as you will find when you listen to uh, everyone here and talk to people about doing research, it's a very great thing to do and, it's, uh, and we're all very passionate about it and, uh, and it, makes, uh, it makes work as a doctor even more meaningful and, uh, and hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll have interest in, uh, in undertaking research and, uh, and we're, what we've got to do tonight is talk about the, uh, the Honours Program, uh, the, the, uh, sorry, the Bachelor of Medical Science Program. So the, the actual uh, uh, program tonight is uh, that I'll be rattling on for about 10 minutes then we'll hear about the honours experience from Tori Berquist, who is, uh, who is uh, fresh uh, from uh, Bachelor of Medical Science and now, uh, now an intern here. Uh, then uh, Karen uh, Jandelite Dam is going to, who's the coordinator for the honours, uh, for the uh, BMED Sci. I keep saying honours, but it's a, it's a similar sort of thing. It's a BMED Sci uh, uh, honours uh, coordinator. Uh, is uh, going to tell you a little bit about who, why um, uh, and when. And then you will have a chance to go to the booths to, uh, to talk to people about uh, potential projects, uh, the sorts of things that are happening and, uh, and then have some light refreshments and then we can go, go home. And hopefully you'll be stimulated and excited by the evening. Now. What is this place? Uh, the, the Alpha Medical Research and Education Precinct is really the largest uh, clinical precinct in the Faculty of Medicine, Nursing and Health Science. That we draw over $85 million in uh, research funds annually and uh, we teach uh, more than 2,000 undergraduate students and, more than eight, and have more than 800 postgraduate students per year. We, have, uh, we train over 350 PhD students per year, so that's a, that's a lot of PhD students. And, uh, and the research output is quite uh, extraordinary in that we have more than 1,200 research articles per year coming out of this precinct, which is uh, that we're very proud of because we like to perform and like to, uh, like to succeed. So, the first thing is why, why should you come here? And uh, AMREP, the, uh, uh, the Alfred Medical Research and Education Precinct, is placed in a beautiful position in uh, Paran with, uh, uh, and, and Melbourne, 3004, with some great coffee. The, 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 here to get coffee, it's a, it's a choice of of multiple places and, and people I know in my department have, uh, have their favourite coffee shops uh, and funny enough it's often the one that's furthest away from the department. But, um, and uh, so what's the choice? You can, you can do it there or you can, you can do it here or you can do a Bachelor of Medical Science and Honours at, uh, at Clayton at the Monash Medical Centre. And, uh, and so the surrounds there, and this was one of the, uh, I mean, we're, we're looking at the best case scenario here of uh, uh, what Clayton is. And we, and the, the, the absolutely stunning thing here is just the co-location of all the research institutes, research groups throughout the Alfred Hospital. Uh, there's the Burnett, the Baker, uh, and, uh, and, and there's a, an enormous uh, cross-fertilisation from all of these groups uh, which is uh, quite, uh, when you're doing research you really do need support because no particular one, particular group or person has all the expertise that we need and we have it all on site. So one of the things that uh, we offer is uh, really is translational research and translational research means different things to different people. To Stephen Jane, it means that we go from, uh, from uh, mouse to house. 
and uh, we were worried, we were debating today whether you would know who House was because it's, uh, it, it sort of hasn't been on television for what, uh, 10, 15 years is it, or 10 years? Anyway, the idea is that, uh, that the simplest concept of translation research is, is developing a molecule in the laboratory and then finding what this molecule does to people with diseases and testing it out so that it becomes a therapy. And there are multiple, the, 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 this can happen where it can, a, uh, an idea can be translated into public health policy, for instance. Uh, there's a lot of, it's really moving, really good scientific information and somehow putting it together to, to reach the end user, the patient in the clinic, in the, the people who organise public health uh, in some way. So, so when you talk to people about translational research, you will find multiple definitions, but it's very clearly, it's taking basic research findings, putting them together and enhancing clinical medicine. And in fact, that's what's so exciting about it. It's not just discovering something, but it's, it's actually discovering something and then translating it into something that's actually useful because we, most of us, would like to think we're doing clinical research and, uh, and uh, medical research to help uh, improve medicine. So what research is happening here? And there are lots of departments. There's the Central Clinical School and you can see that uh, there, uh, there are all these departments, anaesthesia, allergy, respiratory, neurology, neuroscience, sexual health, surgery uh, and uh, and then there's the, uh, uh, the, the public health and uh, epidemiology uh, areas of epidemiology, biostatistics, clinical trials, um, and, uh, uh, and then the Burnet with infectious diseases and global health. I think there, there's, it's a very, very broad range of uh, opportunities here. And uh, what they're made up of really is outstanding clinician scientists uh, and basic scientists. And the basic scientists are very privileged basic scientists. I think I'm a clinician scientist because they're working in a clinical sphere where the relevance of things has, is heightened. And uh, our scientists all appreciate uh, that and doing research in this area. Um, and our supervisors all have translational interests and, uh, and the really excellent thing about doing things here as opposed to on campus in a university is that we're right here with the patients in the, in the thick of things and that makes a huge difference. I can give an example of, uh, of, of my, one of my major interests is in dietary therapies and most dietary groups around the world sit in universities and it's been very hard to translate dietary ideas into clinical, uh, into, into changing clinical course of disease or improving symptoms or improving patient outcomes. And the only reason that we've been able to succeed in this, I think, is because we've recruited scientists and dietitians, and we're working within a hospital setting with clinicians who understand the, who can understand the needs and, and, we, and so by combining all together, we can achieve good outcomes. So what do you need to know about it? Well, there are, uh, uh, this is all sort of uh, an incredibly rewarding year is the important uh, thing. It's a unique experience. It's different to doing, being a medical student, doing clinical uh, medicine. You, uh, you really get to become an expert in, a, in an area. You know, in, in, as medical students, you learn a little bit about lots of things and you never get your teeth into anything. And this is something where you can become uh, an expert in an area. Because you'll, you'll end up, after a year, you'll know as much or more than anyone else in this precinct and maybe even in the world. And this, this is, uh, this is, this is really true. 
It's also a gateway to, uh, to doing a, uh, an accelerated PhD, which I'll talk to you about in a moment um, in translational research. So who do you want who to talk to if you're interested? Uh, there are people, there are, there are individual supervisors, and of course uh, Karen is, the, uh, is the, uh, the, basically the supervisor of the supervisors of the whole program. And she's a very important person to talk to. And she's very nice to talk to, too. OK, and then there are other people here who uh, uh, to talk to. Danny Liu and, uh, and Merlin Thomas are very, these are very important people uh, who are uh, involved with all this coordination. Now, one of the things that B Med Sci students uh, often worry about or people thinking about it is, I'm going to do a year and I'm going to lose my clinical skills and that I'm going to just, just sort of just go backwards, a step backwards in clinically. And this is actually not true. Everyone worries about this, but it's not true. But AMRAP have certainly, uh, certainly are aware of this perception and that they have, uh, they have formal weekly clinical teaching programs to ensure that your skill, skills remain fresh and, uh, and Steve Jane's idea of fresh is showing uh, low, a low FODMAP group of uh, f uh, foods here. Now, the pathways you can take in medicine, the first pathway is, uh, is the standard one where you, from third or fourth year, you move into your final year and then um, uh, final years and, and graduate. The second way, Oh, what happened? I hit the... Uh, um, I hit a link. So the second way is to, uh, uh, is to do a one-year research project uh, to get a Bachelor of... This is the, uh, the green here. To get your Bachelor of Medical Science with honours and then go to final year and to... Uh, or, or the final uh, two years to uh, then to go out on your career with, a, with an idea that you've, you've been enriched by all this and maybe to come back to research uh, after a bit more training. However, there's a third way, which is a very attractive way for those of you who really do get excited by uh, research because you don't know how excited you're going to get until you get in there. And I guarantee you, most of you will get, will get excited that there is a, an accelerated uh, way of, of doing a PhD. If you're BMED, usually a PhD is three or four years of work, and then you would, you would move into, uh, instead of uh, doing three or four years of work later to get your PhD, you can go straight from the, uh, from the BMED SCI year straight into your PhD, and it, it's, you only need two more years because it would be a, uh, an, just an extension of your study and, uh, and then you can go and finish your exam. So it's a way of, uh, of accelerating, accelerating, getting the skills and getting the qualifications. What's the advantage of having a uh, MBBS PhD? And this is something which, uh, one of the things that people are, are people trying to get intern jobs of a little paranoid about. What you'll all be worried about is, can I get in? I want to come to the Alfred. The Alfred's the best place. I want to go there. It might be somewhere else you have a misperception is the best place. <laughs> but, um, uh, but the fact is that with, a PA, with this program that you, uh, you're guaranteed an interview at the Alfred. That the Alfred won't, uh, they interview everyone, take it all very seriously and uh, you're guaranteed an interview. You have an enhanced access to all specialty training uh, programs because having a PhD and having publications and having proven yourself in this is a, an extremely attractive uh, a thing, a positive in your CV for when you're looking for uh, those uh, very, sometimes very hard to get opportunities. It enhances your overall job prospects in the same way for everywhere. Um, it's, it gives you differing job opportunities because with a PhD, with research uh, background, as a doctor, there are lots more things you can do than if you just have a basic, uh, a basically a medical practitioner. 
There are lots more opportunities in uh, academia, uh, in hospital medicine. And the, uh, you can have a career structure based on your research interest, which is a, a big thing that, uh, that I know from my own career that the things that re I get passionate about in clinical medicine are the things that we're researching. And it's really quite because you, you're, you're, it, it's, it's got more meaning. And, uh, and more doors open, which is basically saying the same thing, that, uh, that this does open more doors. And of course, the other thing is you get exposure to wonderful clinician scientists, leaders and mentors. And uh, this is a very, because the way that you, you form your career will be according to your role models that you, you know and you see and you work with and you say, you learn from other people of how you would like to do things and, uh, and this is a great opportunity to work very closely with people rather than, than being just a, just a, a tutor somewhere, a, a distant tutor who you would see very little of. So with that, uh, I think I should be asking you if there are any questions before we move on to the next part. Got any questions? I'm sure you'll have questions later and will be available uh, after uh, after Tori is now going to tell us about her BMED Sci Honours uh, experience at AMRAP.